Thank you for joining this webinar. And this webinar is our 13th webinar that is called How to Beat Simislav Defense Deviations. Okay, we'll wait for more people to come. Now we have only two attendees right now. No, we'll wait maybe for two or three people more. Okay. So what we are going to discuss today, uh, some of you may play Semislav defense, especially no, this is what I play. Maybe some of you play just Slav defense. Uh, however, if you want to play something more complicated than Slav defense is, then you can uh, focus on Semislav. The position that you can get there are really interesting. Some of them sh are sharp some of them are not but at the same time if you know the theory well then you are likely to get at least an equal position maybe even a better position this is what i usually get when i played it okay just wait a second i'll send the message to, to, to some of my students to join this webinar Okay, by the way, guys, I also can enable microphone for those uh, who want. Okay, I'm going to try it with Anusha again. So Anusha, I enabled your microphone and you may try to say something again. Also, let me enable the microphone for Ahilan. So, oops, oh yeah, yeah, it works. And we have another participant, Dulu. I can also enable microphone for you. So Dulu, where are you from? China? Okay, guys, can you hear me? Is everything okay? Oh, you, you can type in the chat. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. So it works. Let me now share the screen and we'll start. Uh huh. Do you see my screen? Okay, perfect. So let's start. Um, I recommend to play semi Slav defense with Slav defense mover. C6, knight of three, knight of six. Uh, why? Because if we do it uh, with a different mover, for example, if we play e6 in this position, then he can just take and force us to play Carlsbad system. And um, then he may choose such a move order where one of the plans is to play uh, e3, f3, then, uh, of course, bishop comes to d3, then knight e2, and his main idea is to push the pawn from e3 to e4. And this is what I don't like. So it's much better to play uh, Carlsbad when the knight is already on f3. I mean, it's much better for black. So that I recommend you to start with Slav defense because now if he takes it's fine, you're gonna play uh, the exchange variation of Slav defense. It's a common knowledge that this position is likely to have so many drawish tendencies and uh, no, yeah, so 
black can make a draw as well as white however on my recent tournament i won one game in this position uh, my opponent uh, offered the draw at move number six or seven however i rejected and then um, slightly changed the position it wasn't in my favor but uh, the position become uh, became more complicated and finally he made a mistake and i uh, got a better position okay so knight f3 knight f6 and this is how we start playing uh semi slav defense and also these three moves are uh, what we usually play when we play slav defense what we are going to cover on this webinar on this webinar we are going to cover uh just uh four different uh sidelines we are not going to uh, cover the main lines of semi-slav defense i can just quickly show you them so for example knight c3 this is what people usually play here then e6 and in this position there are uh, e3 can be played bishop g5 if bishop g5 is played for example then we play h6 and now if he takes we play moscow variation if he goes to h4 with his bishop we take on c4 and after e4 we play g5 and this line is called as anti-moscow gambit uh, this is quite a sharp position and uh, here it's required to know the line properly otherwise you can be in trouble so this is maybe one of the lines that you should learn uh, with exact move order move by move okay uh fine however people usually play e3 in this position because they are afraid of decaptures on c4 where black can gain a pawn uh then knight bd7 and here bishop d3 uh leads to maron variation after d takes c4 bishop c4 and b5 Queen c2 is another popular move in this position, and then um, white wants to play anti maron variation. Uh, for example, here I recommend bishop d6. So we can also play b6, bishop b7, but this is the old version. Uh, that's why it's not popular nowadays, and I wouldn't recommend it. So then, for example, bishop d3, castle, castle, d takes c4, and then e5. I played a few position, a few games in, in this exact position recently, uh, and I scored uh, two and a half points of three. In one game, I was able to win, but uh, um, I had extra pawn, but uh, decided to sacrifice it to get the initiative. However, this initiative wasn't enough to win the game, and uh, finally we agreed to a draw but into other games i won and actually uh oh i can't say with almost no problems but uh, i was able to solve them um, successfully and even start the attack on the enemy king so this is the potential of this uh of this plan and uh, this line of anti maron variation okay fine instead of playing e3 some people who like to play catalan they play g3 it's okay and here you can take on c4 immediately or first play knight bd7 and after bishop g2 take on c4 up to you and everything is covered in my course uh, that is known uh, no, actually, I forgot about uh, I forgot the exact name of this course, but this is a 10 hours video course that is devoted to how to play semi slav defense for black. And uh, well, if you want to get it, just uh, let me know. Please uh, contact me directly. I'll send you an offer for this course. Uh, it covers all this line, including Catalan, Moscow variation, anti-Moscow gambit, Maron variation, and anti-Maron variation. And in the, all these lines are covered in details so that uh, black at least gets equal position. However, sometimes um, in some of the lines, black should be better. 
uh, it's good to play if your opponent doesn't know it because then it's easy to get a better position if he knows then you have to play unclear or equal positions in some of the lines and of course some of the lines in some of the, in some other lines black is better what is not a common practice for black okay uh, let's go back so what we are going to cover today so queen c2 as well as queen b3 in this position, what uh, can typically lead to the same variation. Uh, also e3, e6, and if knight c3, uh, then we come back to uh, Maron or anti-Maron variation. Uh, however, in case of something like bishop d3, knight bd2, or even b3, we have to play a uh, deviation from standard lines and this is what we are going to cover today okay let's start with uh queen c2 move here knight f6 queen c2 instead of queen c2 it's queen b3 can be played like uh, for example uh, grandmaster uh, michael krasinkov played against me at that moment i played uh, e6 and um, didn't really get a good position so g3 knight bd7 happens there uh, bishop g2 bishop e7 uh, bishop g5 castle castle then i uh, did what did i play okay here if i'm not mistaken I took on c4. No, I didn't. Oh, I don't remember the exact move that I played in this position. Ah, it was b6. b6, then I played bishop b7. Finally, took on c4, played b5 and b4. However, uh, here, uh, Michal, because uh, he is an experienced grandmaster and he played this position maybe 100 times, uh, but I played all the, for the first time. I... Um, I got a worse position, however, then I outplayed him and finally he will, to get a draw, he uh, should uh, give a perpetual check. Of course, he did it and uh, then claimed the draw at that game. However, I think it was a success to play against uh, 20, 2,600 player in a draw. Okay, however, now when I analyze this move in all the details, I recommend you to take on c4. So actually, there is no difference. Queen c2 or queen b3, we still take on c4. What happens then? Queen takes on c4. Then we play e6. If we stick to Semislav defense, then we should um, try to uh, keep this formation e6, c6. As for this pawn, it's very often when it goes to c4. Sometimes we can protect it by playing b5 with our pawn. Um, but of course in some positions white is able to win it for example like here with his queen okay uh in this position you see he has several moves g3 for those who like catalan bishop g5 knight c3 and a4 well, let's first start with g3 I think uh, this is the most popular move in this position because nowadays Catalan is a really popular strategy, especially because uh, those who play for black doesn't know, don't know the theory well. That's why white is able to get a better position here. Okay, g3, b5. Uh, remember we did it uh, with our pawn to attack the bishop on c4. Now there is a queen there. So queen d3, bishop b7, bishop g2, knight bd7, castle a6. And here our goal is to play c5 to solve our last problem, that is development of our b7 bishop. What can he do in this position? Well, let's say if he plays this move, then just c5. The pawn on b5 is not hanging. Because here we play bishop e4, taking the queen. If queen d1, for example, or we can just take on b5 and that's fine. 
if he decides to play something like this or maybe he goes here then we can do queen bishop d5 move and if queen goes back then c4 queen moves and we take with the a pawn and uh, finally we solved all the problems with our development we gained some space on the queen side also traded the rooks so a4 is not a big problem we can play c5 immediately instead of this move knight g5 is another option and this move can cause some problems especially if we don't know how to play properly there are several moves including rook a7 with the idea to defend this bishop to be able to play c5 however i recommend uh, queen b6 this is a typical move uh, to uh, protect the bishop on b7 in queen's gambit or even in catalan uh, and then c5 for example bishop f4 just c5 and this is how black solves all the problem with development and at least after that the position is equal however i think it's better for black you will see it later uh, let's now make maybe a for move a4 now c5 is not the best option uh why because the rook can be hanging for example c5 what is it? a mistake in this position then uh then let's say a takes b5 bishop takes on g2 king takes on g2 and we can't capture with the pawn the rook is hanging here and in this position we can't capture immediately if we do so then just a rook to a8 and then uh, this is how we lose a bishop so don't play c5 if uh, no if you lose the material of course so that's why here h6 instead of c5 he has to play with the knight if knight of three is fine then c5 is good knight e4 bishop e7 what can he do now he can trade on f6 he can play bishop e3 as well let's say bishop e3 then we trade here and rook d8 with the intention to play something like c5 knight e5 or maybe e5 with the pawn d5 attacking our queen c5 and in this position uh, there is one sharp line that i also want you to show it's not obligatory to remember because uh, you can find it uh, during the game it's i believe it's a forced line if d takes a six in this position uh, then black is winning can you uh, tell me how black wins in this position you can suggest your move in here in the chat or you can uh, say it by voice if you don't know how to activate your microphone uh, click on the cogwheel uh, near your image or maybe near my image so who knows how black can play in this position to be able to win uh, no, of course not to checkmate but uh, to gain some material Okay, what suggestions do you have? Ninety five. No, I don't think ninety five makes sense. Queen C two, maybe after that. Okay, it's knight of six. It's uh, more clear to it's a double attack actually. Two of these pieces are hanging. And if he takes, just king of seven. Oh, wait, maybe king of eight is better in this position. 
yeah sorry here uh, king f7 doesn't work because something like bishop g6 is played but king f8 works king f8 and after he moves the queen he loses his bishop uh, that's why instead of uh, playing d takes on e6 immediately they first should play a takes b5 a takes b5 and d takes on e6 now and if now we play knight f6 then e captures on f7 king f8 and queen d8 if bishop d8 we lose our bishop on b7 here bishop d8 bishop b7 queen b7 bishop c5 check well actually in this position in case if we want to uh, draw then we can play this move king f7 if we want to play this position then queen should take bishop c5 um, king f7 doesn't work because of rook a7 so okay let me show with the arrows that's why bishop e7 should be played instead rook a7 queen c6 check with the bishop king f7 bishop f6 king takes on f6 this position is unclear if i were playing it i would choose black because i prefer to play with queen against other material So that was bishop uh, e3 move. Uh, instead, I think knight f6 is a more logical continuation. Knight takes knight, knight d2, and then just castle knight b3, let's say. Oh, and here we still want to play c5, but with knight b3, he stops this activity. Uh, but we have this move, because if rook a4, we can play queen b5. And now if he takes, we take with the c-pawn and attack the rook and also offer a trade so bishop b7 we take here he takes our rook rook takes bishop the material is equal however we have double pawns on the a file but it's not a big problem knight c5 bishop c5 d takes c5 rook b8 and then uh, finally rook b5 with the intention to attack both pawns if he plays c6, then rook c5, taken from behind. Also, knight d5 can close the file, and uh, his b2 pawn is also the object of the attack. Uh, Black is considered to be better in this position because uh, one of these pawns is a weakness. However, I think that uh, uh, the game in this position uh, can end with a draw because. Um, no, I don't believe there are uh, some practical chances to win, especially on the top level. Uh, maybe for players about 1800, black can win. Maybe white can win if black blunders. However, the position is approximately equal. Okay, let's go back. If he doesn't take but play queen c4, then just knight d7 is enough with the intention uh, to play knight b6 and force this trade. Okay, let's go back. So this is what I want you to remember. So here, g3, you play b5, queen d3, and then you make this fianchetto on the queen side bishop g2 knight bd7 then a6 and your task is to play c5 if he allows it it's fine if not then play queen b6 and uh, still try to do c5 okay fine so instead of g3 there are several other moves let's now cover uh, bishop g5 move still b5 queen c2 bishop b7 e4 yeah it's easy to play knight bd7 and in this position uh, something like bishop d3 should be played but uh, he may play e5 okay who can tell me why uh, we are not afraid of this move how black can continue after e5 
86, right. Oh, queen, queen e5 doesn't work because if queen e5 is played immediately, then bishop d2 and two of our pieces are hanging simultaneously. h6. If he takes here, we take on g5. He takes on g7, but bishop g7, and we have a bishop pair. The d4 is a weakness. We are threatening with g4, and we gained more space. If uh, instead of taking on f6, they play bishop h4, if so, then yes, queen a5 works. And if knight c3, knight d5, and then we play uh, a similar strategy to what is usually applied in uh, Cambridge Springs variation with uh, this queen a5, bishop b4 attack. However, it's not, uh, it's not only in Cambridge Springs variation, it's quite popular even in Semislav defense. Okay, fine. So e5 is not a good move. Something like bishop d3 should be played instead. a6, a4, h6, and then our task is to advance the pawn to c5. Now, now we can't do it because b5 it will be hanging, just bishop e7 for now. And after he plays knight c3, then b4 and c5. If he takes, fine. Rook c8. Um, I played the... Uh, same idea in the game against Mikhail Krasinkov. Uh, uh, so rook c8, then take on c5 with the rook to threaten the queen. And he has no ideas how to protect this pawn with other pieces. So remember, one of the ideas is to play b5 and make a fianchetto on the queen side and then try to do c5, uh, regardless of what uh, white is doing. Okay, bishop g5, a4. This is what we definitely should analyze because this move stops our b5 activity. However, we can play b6. Bishop g5, bishop e7. g3, bishop a6. This is one of the ideas of our b6 move. Queen c2, then c5. Bishop g2, and then knight c6. What do you think? Uh, oh, yeah, if we play rook c8, then it's fine. But don't you think that we weakened our position too much? If, for example, they take, take, and then they play knight e5, how can we play in this position? Okay, please uh, suggest what black can do now. Bishop b7, you mean? No, bishop b7 doesn't work. Uh, there are two pieces attacking on c6. His knight and his bishop from g2. So bishop b7 we can lose a piece in such a case. Knight e4. Ah, you mean uh, knight takes on d4. Okay. Uh... Okay, I think it will be better for you. So knight d4. Yes, but after queen e4, how to deal with it? Because our rook is hanging. I don't know, maybe rook c8 might work, but uh, there is a much better move. Can you find it? Okay, it's just bishop b7 here. Uh, what's the idea to gain this bishop? If queen takes on b7, knight c2, 
king f1 is the only move and queen d1 is a checkmate okay so actually a4 is not a problem for us if we know how to play b6 bishop a6 and c5 knight c6 and rook c8 so don't be afraid of it so here of course bishop f6 by <clears throat> white is a wrong move but if not then rook c8 and we are fine with it and the last move to cover knight c3 b5 of course queen d3 a6 e4 c5 and here the main move is d takes on c5 and it's fine don't worry because then bishop takes on c5 queen takes d8 uh don't worry about the king because there are no queens on the board and that's why uh there are no ways almost no ideas for white to threaten your king so let's say e5 knight fd7 bishop g5 check bishop a7 if only we locate our king on e7 it would be really good let's say castle bishop b7 and now we are threatening to take on f3 take on g5 take on e5 of course uh, here black is slightly better uh, in one of my games in one of my recent games uh, my opponent didn't take on c5 he played bishop g5 here i took on d4 that was correct knight d4 and this is where i played b4 however instead knight bd7 and black is better in this position then bishop b7 uh, bishop e7 and no problems for black and black also developed his pieces faster however i played b4 instead in this position he played knight d1 and that was really good for me he could play another move and to uh, equalize the position but then i got a better position so you see bishop c5 uh, because i can't play bishop e7 right now in such a case he will play knight c6 and trade my uh his knight for my dark squared bishop but that if bishop c5 first and then bishop e7 then there is no knight c6 fork so this position is slightly better for black this is what i got uh it was a really difficult game against a strong international master however i won it but it took me about uh, maybe four hours and a half or even maybe five hours there were about uh, 60 moves okay uh fine we are not going to analyze this game today moreover you can find this um, game or analyzed on my youtube channel or on my chess.com page okay so now you know if here he plays queen c2 or queen b3 we take then play e6 then do a uh, queen side fianchetto extended fianchetto with our b5 c6 6 b5 a6 pawns and bishop b7 and c5 this is the main idea now let's cover some other lines uh and actually one more thing uh oh no so here we are going to cover these lines e6 and then if knight c3 it's fine this is a normal semislav defense but uh instead he has uh, such moves like bishop d3 uh, knight bd2 b3 with the pawn yeah right. wait bishop d3 yeah these three moves uh that um, uh, could lead to unnatural positions however this is what i want you to know too because oh well, i don't know how about you but when i play uh, semislav uh, usually a white player who is uh, usually stronger or higher rated than me tries to deviate because maybe because he doesn't prepare for the game or maybe he thinks that i am uh, prepared much better which is usually true uh but one more thing i want you to remember if you play slav defense and you don't really want to play semi slav defense here you may just play bishop f5 this is another strong move 
um, when we play uh, bishop f5 in defense, sometimes we are afraid of something like that, queen b3. But don't worry, it's not a big problem because in this position we can just play bishop c8 back. He restricted his bishop. We can do the same thing with our bishop. And queen b3 in such a case is a use, uh, totally useful move. That's why at least here we may equalize. After bishop f5, he may play knight c3, e6, and bishop h4. Uh, that what happened in one of my games uh, in the tournament in Budapest. Uh, I played bishop g6 in that position. Uh, however, now I realized that uh, bishop e4 is a better option. Why? Because it forces f3. You see, if here he takes, then d takes. And it's now difficult to play with this knight. Uh, it can be trapped with the next move. Of course, g3. Uh, gonna be played, uh, but it's not in white uh, favor to play so many moves with the knight and forget about uh, his pieces development. So that's why, according to theory, f3 is the best option. Then uh, bishop g6, knight g6, and this move weakens the king. Now we can also attack the h2 pawn in some of the lines. However, I recommend you to take only if you get more benefits than just one pawn, because this is a potential weakness. You should also look at what is happening in the center. Mm, however, in that game, I played this move. It was OK, because uh, this is a good move too. Uh, what happens then? Bishop d3. Then I played bishop d6 on i d7. I don't remember exactly. He castled. I played bishop d6. He played h3. And uh, in this position, if I'm not mistaken, I played something like that. Then, for some reason, he played this move. Now, that looks logical if then you want to take with the knight. However, he took with the bishop. Uh, I could take this bishop, but didn't do this. And here the best option was to play bishop c7, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but I played d5, actually. Yeah, I played d5. And he played queen f3. This is what I remember. Then I played bishop c7 finally, and he took on c6. That was, of course, a mistake by him. b takes, uh, queen takes, rook c8, knight b5. And here I had several moves. However, I castled uh, knight c7. And in this position, I can do anything I want, like knight b6. Uh, what else? Uh, queen d8. Uh, however, I played knight b8, another move, and after knight d5, knight c6, knight e7, I finally got extra piece for just three pawns. However, then one of them was lost. Now, for example, if knight d7, that is uh, what happened in the game, one of the pawns gonna be lost anyway, and then we, we will be a knight for two pawns. And I successfully won this game, but not without problems. Uh, the, my opponent was really strong, and he finally got the first place in that tournament. Uh, he scored uh, six and a half. I scored six, so I was the second in Budapest. He got the first place, and it was his only loss. Okay, um, now let's go back. So, what did I wanted you to know? Uh, for those who prefer just Slav defense, then after e3, bishop f5 can be played. Don't forget about it. However, today we are going to cover Semislav sidelines, so that's why uh, let's start with which move. 
let's start with bishop d3 first bishop d3 how to play them d captures on c4 what looks natural uh, when uh, he played with the bishop once then we may take on c4 of course we uh, give we give up the control over the center but at the same time we force him to play with the same piece twice and uh, what is more important we uh, can play b5 with the tempo for example if knight c3 in this position then b5 and we play uh Maron variation so this is how we can switch to Maron variation and play one of the main lines of it and if let's say here instead of playing knight c3 he castles we can do bishop d6 i believe b5 still works in this position but bishop d6 is uh what i recommend because you no know, let's say knight d5 we can play e5 and then the position is uh, similar to uh, anti maron variation but without queen c2 move however knight d2 is not the best option here in anti maron variation and i believe here uh, black already equalized the position at least we solved our main problem which is our light squared bishop on c8 because after all the trades we can activate it to f5 or g4 93 this is the main move castle and here we should be afraid of e4 if he doesn't play e4 then we can play e5 and even get a better position for example queen c2 e5 and we are fine but uh, e4 how to play against this move what do you suggest Mm -hmm. uh, you can share your ideas here uh, now uh, white wants to give a fork on e5 what should we do play with our knight play with our bishop or do something else yeah it should be it should be five definitely five five if he takes it's fine no let's see knight e5 knight e5 knight e5 bishop e5 queen d8 rook d8 what else can he do maybe i don't know bishop g5 then maybe rook e8 or just h6 anything maybe b5 with the intention to play b4 and to get rid of this knight maybe attack on b2 as well so so many options for you to get a better position uh, that's why after e5 we should analyze bishop g5 immediately however then just queen e7 if he plays something like that i don't recommend you to take just do knight b6 if in if later he takes you take with the b pawn of course this is how you get a weakness on c6 but this weak pawn can protect these two key squares b5 and d5 and actually there are many benefits of having such a pawn on c6 so h3 maybe here to prevent some activity with uh, bishop g4 or also um, sometimes this pawn is under attack for example uh, let's play something like rook c1 then e takes d4 knight takes d4 yeah ah uh, no in this position it's not hanging uh in not okay let's do another move maybe not this but queen c2 if here yes it's hanging e takes d4 e takes d4 and then bishop h2 king h2 and knight g4 well, this is a typical idea of anti maron lines and you can play uh, this idea even in this variation too So queen is seven, that's why h3 is so popular. He takes d4, knight d4, bishop c7. No, I don't think here um, black has any problems. For example, knight f5, queen f5, threatening the checkmate. f4 doesn't work because of queen c5 check, and we gain a bishop. 
g3 knight d6 if bishop f4 fine queen c5 attacking on c4 if he takes here we first take the knight and second the bishop and then the position is equal uh also maybe it's uh, better for black uh, especially if white loses a few tempers because of his weakness on f5 if b3 just rook c8 so that he has not enough time to play bishop d6 or something like that and he doesn't really win any material okay fine Okay, looks like we cover it, bishop d3 line. So remember, we take, he takes, and then we play knight d7 and b5. Oh, wait, wait, sorry. Uh, in some variations, we may play b5, especially if knight c3 is played. But in um, the main line, when uh, he castles, we play bishop d6. Then our task is to advance the pawn from e6 to e5 and play something typical to anti maron variation. Okay, another move in this position is knight bd2. If so, I recommend you to play c5 immediately. Uh, what do you think? What's the most popular move in this position for white? No, just tell me how would you play in this position for white? knight b3 mm, i don't think so however in such a case just c takes on d4 works and at least black equalize the position uh actually according to statistics that i see uh there were about 200 uh, 2,400 games, and in 2,000 of them, it was knight b1 played. I don't really understand it, because after knight c6, knight c3, the position is symmetrical, but uh, black uh, gets extra temper. Now black uh, can play as he is white, because uh, it's symmetrical position, and he's turned to move. Uh, that's uh, why... Um, uh, definitely black is not standing worse i believe black is even better here however this is what people play that's strange of course okay knight bd2 of course so uh, we don't expect a human uh, <laughs> or even a player of your level to play knight b1 i even don't believe that someone uh, who uh usually play against me can play something like knight b1 here i believe they would play b3 c takes on d5 or something like that for example c takes on d5 because it looks logical if so we have to play with isolated pawn unfortunately but at the same time there are no problems with our pieces development for example bishop d6 b4 uh, according to statistics, uh, all these four moves are good for black. Black can choose anything he wants. However, in one of the most recent games by top players, it was a knight c to e4 played. Then knight if uh, bishop b2 castle, knight f4 d takes on e4. And uh, here I think you uh, you can believe me that black has no problems at all. If knight moves, even uh, bishop b4 works. Maybe white gets a compensation, uh, but it's definitely not enough to get any advantage for white. So I can say it's equal. Okay. So that was c takes on d5 move. Another option and another clear plan is to play b3. Knight c6 in such a case. Bishop b2 c takes on d4 i don't think knight d4 um, helps white because if so then we can just trade with our knights so actually if white wants to play with the position with two hanging pawns then it's better to keep more minor pieces on the board bishop a7 bishop d3 and then uh, b6 bishop d7 
uh, it looks obvious, but at the same time, this is how black uh, at least can equalize. Uh, as for this position, I would say it requires future analysis. And uh, let's consider this position to be unclear. However, uh, here, uh, if he takes, uh, we take with our queen or a knight and play the position against an isolated pawn. Uh, should we take? I don't know. Maybe not, because in such a case, he gets a hanging pawn structure. And while there are four pairs of minor pieces, it can be in white's favor. But if we trade at least one pair or two pairs, two pairs of minor pieces is better, then uh, we definitely should take on c4 and our position will be better. So b3, then we just play knight c6. Uh, at some moment we take on d4 and develop our bishop on the king side, castle and play b6, bishop b7. b3. This is another move that can be played. Uh, however, it's not a strong move, and if b3 is played so early, then you can give a check on b4. Another option is to play knight bd7. Bishop d3, bishop d6, bishop b2, and then just b6, bishop b7. Like this. This uh, strategy, this position is almost symmetrical, and uh, let's consider it to be equal. According to the statistics, many of the games, uh, I mean, maybe 90% of the games here, we ended in a draw. However, I like bishop before move more, because then what can he do? If he plays this move, fine, let's just retreat, because when the bishop is on d2, it's not on b2, it doesn't do anything, It's it can't support the e5 square, and if he wants to play bishop c3, he spends another temper, and also he has to locate his knight on d2. That is not good for all positions. If he plays something like knight c3, then we knight play knight d7, bishop d3, castle, and then e5. And this is anti-marine variation, uh, where black has extra temper because bishop d2 was played. This position is considered to be in a black favor. For example, c takes d5, c takes d5, knight b5, bishop b8. Don't worry about it. He takes only five. Otherwise, we play e4. So he is almost forced to take. And then in this position, we play with isolated pawn again. But at the same time, our pieces are much more active. We can play knight e4 and develop our light squared bishop, as well as we get the control over the c-file. Uh, okay, uh, c5 in what position? Ah, you mean here, c5? That's fine. Bishop c7. It's not back, it's on c7. Because after d takes on e5, c5 also becomes a weakness. Okay. Okay, fine. So bishop d2 is not a good move, but bishop to knight bd2, this is what they can play in such a case. However, if so, then I can show you what to play knight bd7 first. <clears throat> if bishop, no, here, bishop b2 or bishop d3. If bishop d3, then I recommend you to play e5 immediately. You can allow this move because after d takes e5, you have bishop c3 fork. If he takes on f6, you take on e1. Then it's fine, you gain the exchange. Uh, that's why 
here for example rook b1 but fine a knight e5 and after you trade you take on e5 with your bishop it's equal knight f3 bishop g4 probably and here it's up to you uh, if c takes on d5 i would recommend you to take with the queen maybe with your knight to get to c3 Uh, that's why to stop bishop c3 activity, white should play bishop b2. If so, knight e4 to pin him, bishop d3. And what do you think? How to play in this position? The knight on e4 is not hanging, but uh, at the same time, after white castles, it's gonna be hanging. So let's try to solve this uh, situation now and do something. Okay, please suggest a move how black should play here. Queen a5. Uh, if queen a5, then how to deal with a3? Okay, and bishop d2. Oh, bishop d2 I don't recommend because this is how you trade your good bishop for a knight. As for queen a5, then a3. And uh, looks like now black is forced to trade his bishop for a knight, which is in white favor because uh, white gets the advantage of a bishop pair in such a case. Uh, no, in uh, such a situation, I recommend you to play f5 and to switch to Dutch defense. Something similar happened in one of my games uh, in Budapest. I lost this game, but uh, I got a really good position after a first 10 moves. However, then I didn't find the best plan after f5 for example castle castle queen c2 then queen f6 and i got something similar but with extra tempo my bishop was not on b4 but on d6 uh, and uh, i could just play b6 and bishop b7 instead i played another option i played something i don't remember exactly i played queen h6 knight f6 lost the control over e5 square and finally decided to apply a sacrifice but uh, it wasn't successful so when you play dutch defense in this uh, structure um, with this pawn structure um, so b6 and bishop b7 this is one of the main ideas when i was younger my coach told me that bishop d7 bishop e8 bishop h5 is the best plan and uh, uh, i actually stick to to this plan however no nowadays everything changed and b b6 bishop b7 is considered to be much better like don't uh, focus on the attack only try to play in the center as well Okay, so looks like we covered everything that I wanted to show you. Uh, do you have any questions? For example, about this position or about some other positions of Semislav defense? Oh, while I'm waiting for uh, questions, I also want to remember for those who maybe missed it in the very beginning. Um, um, as for Semislav main lines, I covered them in my video course. And if you want to get it, just uh, message me directly to my email or maybe to my Skype. I can. Uh, I can type my email here in chat. It's tricks of chess uh, at gmail.com.
so you can message me about my Semislav course and I can send you an offer. Um, okay, and yes, I'm going to upload this webinar on chess.com. Yeah, I will, maybe in a few days. Uh, okay, there is a good question from Ahlan. Is the Slav good? Uh, I think yes. I think Slav is the, the most simple and it's it's good for beginners especially. For those who want to play uh, complicated positions, I recommend Semislav. That's why I play Semislav. But, however, sometimes I'm okay to play Slav defense against a stronger player uh, to avoid complications, uh, not to avoid blunders and mistakes because it's easier to draw the game in Slav defense rather than a semi-Slav defense. But I usually, in my games, I usually play for a victory. Uh, that's why I prefer semi-Slav. Uh, no, it depends on uh, who I'm playing with. No, the question is, do I think uh, I will win in Slav or Slav defense? Uh, of course, I, I believe I can win there. And according to the statistics from my recent games, uh, I lost only once in Meron variation, actually. Uh, not because of the opening and not because of the move order, but uh, because of a miscalculation later in the middle game. And uh, yeah, in the middle game, I made a miscalculation because of I got because I got into time trouble. But my position was better in, after first maybe fourteen or fifteen moves. That was the only lost, and I won a few games in anti Meron variation. This is what I really like. Uh, I also won a game uh, in uh, Slav defense exchange variation. So that's okay. But this is what I suggest to play. However, maybe you can also choose uh, something like Grunfeld variation or. Grunfeld defense, I mean, or what? Nimza Indian defense. Uh, these are two um, very strong openings for black. However, it requires, no, they both require good knowledge as well as Semislav defense. For me, it's just uh, more simple to play. Not, not not simple, but I understand such positions when the pawn is on d5. And uh, I also recommend... Uh, to play this line for this opening for those who play something like Karakan defense or French defense when the pawn is usually on d5. Okay, guys, thank you for your attention. Thank you for coming to this webinar. But uh, we finish now. If you have any other questions, you can message me. If um, you can also suggest the topic of the next webinar or just ask me any questions by sending an email. Okay, bye.